Of his health radio, I'm Ian Jessup. And I'm Corey Elland. Glioblastomas are brain tumors that arise from astrocytes, the star shaped cells that make up the glue like or supportive tissue of the brain. These tumors are usually highly cancerous because the cells reproduce quickly and they are supported by a large network of blood vessels. Despite conventional treatment, the cancer usually recurs. The most common length of survival following diagnosis is 12 to 15 months, with fewer than 3 to 5% of people surviving longer than 5 years. Without treatment, survival is typically 3 months. And joining us from California to tell the story of her daughter's glioblastoma is Elma. And Elma doesn't want her last name used, so we'll respect that. Elma, thanks very much for doing this. Hi, thank you so much for having us. It's an honor. How old was your daughter when she was diagnosed? She was 19. And how old is she today? 21, thank God. How was she feeling prior to her diagnosis? Um, She only was complaining uh, about headaches for about a few months. And then um, she was in the second semester she had just finished her second semester of college. We thought maybe it has to do with the pressure of college. Um, she was doing so many. She had 20 units. She was a very she was an honorable school, um, student in high school, so she took on a lot when she went into junior college. She was accepted to Fresno um, a University, and then um, but we couldn't afford it to send her there. So she said, "It's okay. I'll go to seal you know the the junior college, and I will do my general ed there." And Oh, we'll be okay. So we let, you know, she completed, she did 16 units the first semester and then 20 units the second semester. So we just uh, were attributing it to the stress of college and she started to sleep a lot and she started saying, Mom, this headache won't go away. And I go, you know, start using your glasses more. That's why you have glasses, which she was prescribed about a year ago prior to that. And so she wasn't using her glasses. In hindsight, we should have thought about that. But that's all she was having is headaches, and then um, she started vomiting. So once she started vomiting, I'm like, okay, that's something's going on, because she had the mom. Mom, can you take to the doctor? The headache won't go away. I go, yes, okay, we'll take you next week. Well, then she do. She vomited. I go, okay, I will take you today. <laughs> we took her to a walk-in clinic, which you know, we I never have time to take her to a regular doctor's office. When she did, she would get sick, so we would take her to this walk-in clinic, and um, we always liked walking clinics we've never heard anything bad about walking clinics so we took her there and he was um the pa was very concerned about her because he goes well she's 20 she's 19 she shouldn't be having this these issues maybe there's a virus going on let's do labs they did labs and everything came out good and he's like okay um let's give her a shot for her the nausea and um some pain medicine for headache. Oh, so we tried that. A couple of days went by, and it's like, you know what? Let's just do an MRI because it wasn't happen- It wasn't working for her. And I'm like, an MRI doesn't that sound um, doesn't that sound like a lot excessive? And it's like, well, let's just rule it out. What what can it hurt? I'm like, okay. So this is coming from a walking clinic. But normally, I've heard that people walking clinics would just send you home and just give you kind of law, and that's it. So I was thought well, maybe he's just being excessive, maybe you know. But thank God he did. He requested the MRI um, two days later on a Monday, June 29th, and that MRI just changed their whole life. Um, they just uh, told from the MRI, my husband was taken home. The doctor's office called me at work, said, we need her to come back to the office. And I'm like, why? What's wrong? And they said, well, we can't really tell you. We just need her to come back. She's over age, so she needs to come back to the office. So I was at work, so I was frantically calling my husband, and I tell him to go back to the office. Something's wrong. And he's like, there is nothing wrong. Just don't worry about it. I, I handle it. I can handle it. So just stay at work, and I'll, I'll call you later. And I just couldn't have, I can't deal with it at work, so I, I told my boss, something's wrong, I need to go. She, my boss said, go, just go. So I went to the uh, office, and as, when I was pulling in, my husband and her were leaving the office, and she was crying, and I'm like, he goes, get in the car. I go, what, what do you mean, we'll get in the car? He goes, get in the car, we need to go to the hospital right now. I'm like, what? And Victoria starts crying, mom, they found something in my brain, they want me to go to the ER. 
I was, I just lost it, and uh, my husband got me in the car, and we headed to the ER. And at the ER, that's when they told, um, we got in right away, and they said, the neurologist there, he said that um, they need to transport her to Fresno to a higher level care because um, she has a tumor, which is, which, which is bigger than a walnut, I'm sorry, bigger than a grape, smaller than a walnut-sized tumor in the middle of the brain. So, but they don't know whether it's a good brain tumor or a bad brain tumor. He was trying to be very lame in terms with us because we were just so frantic and I was so frantic. Um, my son, who has high function autism, he's like, what the heck is a good tumor? And <laughs> there's no such thing. Because he, 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 being high function autism, he knows it, that it was not a good thing. He already had a feeling that it wasn't a good thing. And so we all were all scared. So um, they transferred her over to the higher level hospital. Basically, they, they said that she could have fallen asleep at any time and never woken up. That's how dangerous her tumor was. It was in the right frontal lobe, right near the middle of her brain. Um, they kept her overnight. The following morning, they did a biopsy. The biopsy showed that it was a glial tumor. At that time, they didn't give us the diagnosis because, of course, it takes a while to do the actual confirmation. Um, she stayed to the biopsy on Tuesday, and they decided they went to the tumor board to decide whether what to do about it. Um, Wednesday and then Thursday, they told me that they need to go in there and um, remove it. So um, it was a very delicate surgery, a long surgery, um, but the the great Dr. Quo, he neurosurgeon, awesome doctor, he was able to take out. 98% of that tumor. Elma, what sort of treatment options did they offer after removing 98% of the tumor? They said due to um, doing the, being a glial tumor, there was not very much treatment out there for it. That basically they're gonna, they don't know whether it's a grade 3 or a grade 4. They didn't know what grade, but they were going to treat it as aggressively as possible, which means um, removal, chemotherapy, and radiation, or radiation and then chemotherapy, I should say. And the chemotherapy wasn't the regular type of chemotherapy that we all hear about. It was a chemo pill. It was a pill of form called Temadar. And um, so, in a way, we were confused because we never heard. First of all, there's never been cancer in our family, in our immediate family, whether it be my family, the kid's dad's family, or even my husband's family. None of us have had cat cancer in our immediate families. Um, so we did not know what to expect. We did not know anything about it. Elma, what kind of, it. sorry to interrupt here, what kind of uh, prognosis did they uh, offer? 12 to 14 months. 12 to 14 months. Yes. I see. Did, did, and, did, um, Elma, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I realize your daughter is within hearing distance of you, but did you tell her that she had 12 to 14 months, or did you keep that from her? We kept it from her for um, for a few days. We're thinking of keeping it from her for longer, and we decided, her father, her bio- biological father, and my husband and myself, we decided that we needed to tell her. Because her being over 18, these doctors were not taking into consideration that she was so young-minded. So they were saying all these words to her, and she was not understanding. And so um, we had to sit down and talk to her and tell her. And she's like, no, that's not going to happen. That's not me. I've got too much stuff going on. I'm only 19. There's no way. So she, so she never accepted it, which is very... Like she's like, I'm gonna beat this, mom. I'm gonna beat this, and I'm like, yes, you are. You're right. You're right, mom. You, mama, you're right. And so her positivity rubbed off on me. As a mother, I was still, I was, I'm still scared. Maybe I'm still scared, but I have to show her. I gotta, you know, I gotta. You have to be strong for her. Right. Are you okay now, Emma? She's in the kitchen, so I tried to get into my bedroom. Oh, okay. 
I just don't know if the reception here is very good or not, but uh, I close, close the door. Hopefully she can't hear me anymore. <laughs> She's making um, something to eat before she goes to school. Oh, so I'm sorry. I'm so long-winded. I just I know you just asked me a few questions, and I am just went off. No, that's fine. We've got, uh, we've got plenty of time for you to tell your story. Just take a deep breath, and the good news is that uh, today she's fine. Tell us about the treatments that she underwent and how cannabis entered the picture. Okay. Well, it was pretty um, a, a dire situation when she was in that hospital because she had – she was um, – when she did her, her surgery on that Friday, July 3rd, it was a whole day surgery. And then um, she had started getting complications there right after. She wasn't getting any better. She was getting fevers and um, it wouldn't, fevers and her, her blood pressure kept dropping. And um, she wasn't getting out of bed because of, you know, it was really complicated situation. We didn't know. They even thought she had meningitis. They they quarantined her. And um, that hospital, it was terrible on my part because I wasn't allowed to stay the night with her. She, they said, well, she's 18. She's an adult. You have to go home. You know, there's no place. You, we don't have any place for you. And I'm like, she's just a baby. She doesn't understand anything. So turns out she was there for two weeks. I found out through a counselor that I could have her transferred over to a children's hospital. She's only 19. She could be there up to 21. And I'm like, what? I didn't know that. And so we, right away, within a day, we got her transferred to the children's hospital. And it was like night and day. As soon as we got there, they said, you know what? She's developed hydrocephalus. We need to go in there and put a shunt, a permanent shunt on her uh, to relieve the pressure. And I'm like, what is that? I don't know what that means. Um, there were extra uh, fluid in her brain, and it wasn't going anywhere. It wasn't the brain wasn't allowed being um, healing properly, and so that's why she was getting all her. That's why we think she's getting all these fevers and this and this and that. I'm like, okay, okay. So they had to do another surgery on her. That surgery was the godsend because the next day she was able to get up, no more fevers. And she was able to to start walking and relearn how to walk and relearn how to use her left arm. Um, she stayed there another two weeks, a total of 37 days in the hospital. While in the hospital, at Jolly Children's Hospital, I was able to talk to um, some friends of mine um, who said, Alma, we have something to tell you. We need, to, we need to talk to you about something. And I'm like, okay. He's like, I don't know how you feel about it, but I need you to talk to my cousin because her aunt had some kind of brain cancer. It wasn't the same thing you had, but she had lymphoma and, and she had 13 tumors in her brain. She started cannabis oil, Alma, and she is better. She is better. All her tumors are gone. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? What is, she has no more cancer? They're all gone. And, and we know it's cannabis oil. And I just thought that was just like, what? My husband, who is was against it in the beginning, and then the, the kid's father... I started researching it, and I started showing them all these good things about cannabis oil, and I just like, this is the way to go. We need to do this. I, there is, glioblastoma has no cure. There's no way. I'm losing my daughter. There's no way. We got to do this. I don't know how we're going to get the money, but we have to, we have to look into this as soon as possible. And so my husband and is like, you know, let's do it. We'll get the money somehow. Um, and then the kid's dad, he's like, um, you know, whatever you need, I'm there. I'll, I'll help you in whatever I can. Everything will we'll split down the middle. We'll, let's do it. So I had them on board. So I was like, nobody else matters. I don't care anybody what anybody says about it. We're going to get her cannabis oil. So... Um, um, I'm so lucky that my friend introduced me to his cousin. His, his cousin came over to the hospital to visit her, and she actually was, like I said, a godsend. She told me about the story of her own aunt, what she's doing for her, giving her the cannabis oil, how she's administrating it, where she got it from. And I told her, would you mind, I know this is the first time we ever met, but do you mind going with me to go pick up some oil? And she's like, I, I have no problem with that. I'll go with you. We had to travel to San Jose to get the oil. That's where she got her oil, and that's where we decided that we would do this following her steps 
and go to San Jose and get it. That's three hours from us, where we live. So we went the following um, see, she, she she stayed in the hospital for 37 days. She did rehab. She was needed to get healed up before she started radiation. We wanted her to start as soon as possible. Um, oh, before that, we had a, a second opinion to go to UCSF, the, the, the Valley Children's Hospital. We kind of we wanted to tell him about kind of the ill, so we kind of mentioned it. And he's like, "No, it won't work. You shouldn't. There's no. There's no. That's not what is good for her." And they were against it. They were totally against it. And so, of course. I, I was afraid to mention it again, but I, I mentioned it again. Once we went to a second opinion for UCSF, which was about a week after she was released from the hospital, we went over there, and the, one doc, the doctors there actually were more open to cannabis oil, and they, but they did suggest don't start her till after radiation because she was going to be very tired for radiation, and once you administrate that cannabis oil, it's going to make her even more tired. I have nothing against it. I I'm not going to tell you not to do it. I'm not going to tell you to do it. It's going to be totally up to you. We have heard good things about it. I'm not able to say too much more about that. But I just would recommend you to wait till after radiation. And then I was on these communities, and these people, a lot of people were saying, no, you need to do it right away, even with radiation. Um, what my friends told me, who said, I rather, I told him, that's what they told me. Uh, UCSF told me to wait till after radiation, she's going to be super tired and this and that. And she's like, Alma, I'd rather be tired and alive than the opposite. And I'm like, I'd rather her be sleeping and tired and, you know, get healed up. He'll be healing while on cannabis oil and be here with us. And thank God we did because she's still here with us. And it's been two years. July 3rd was her. her her, her two-year anniversary from her brain surgery, and so she's back in college, and she's um, doing great, and we're, we're very blessed. Isn't very, that very phenomenal, blessed. hey, that she's doing so well? Yeah. The cannabis oil that she took, was it high THC? You know, I mean, we hear all these different stories, 50-50 or high THC or whatever. What did your daughter do? So high THC, low CBD. We've always heard other stories about how it's supposed to be one to one ratio mm. or different bit ratios, but we've we've stuck with what our friend was using and what works. And that's high- what works for you, right? Which yes. is high THC. Exactly. Was she ingesting the oil just orally, or was she doing suppositories as well? No, we've always had her do orally. Um, it's ugly, ugly taste, but we hit it with a little bit of peanut butter, and a lot of people don't like that idea either, but. Again, it's worked for her, and she has no complaints about it. She takes it at nighttime before she goes to bed, and she's on the maintenance dosage now, which is about two rice grain sized of oil in between a little bit of peanut butter right. to go to mask the taste. When you were actively fighting this with her, how often were you giving it to her? In the beginning, we did the protocol of 60 grams within 90 days. Did you did you so give that, like, in, in, okay, so for example, with the 60 grams in 90 days, you know, let me just stress that this is, that's only a guideline. Some people need more, some people need less. And the general idea with the 60 grams in 90 days is to work up to a gram a day. So when you were at that point, if you got to that point that you were giving her a gram a day, was that all in one dose or were you splitting that up into three doses throughout the 24 hours? Exactly. We would do it in three dosage within 24 hours. So we would, I would um, put it in little plastic um, spoons three times a day up until she get to the one gram. And then um, again, mix the whole day, 24 hours. Throughout the whole 24 hours. Sorry, I'm, I'm getting. Oh, that's okay. Here. Emma, how did, uh, how did you, your daughter react to taking the oil? She actually was okay with it. She's like, she didn't question me, which, um, the mom, you know what you're doing, you know, I do whatever you ask me to do. She didn't have a problem with it. She didn't even have a high on it. Um, I, I should say to back. She did. She kind of was a little bit funny. She said, mom, that car looks funny. It's driving. I mean, it's flying. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so she would get a little bit of high like during the morning, but, um, throughout the day she slept a lot. And which is okay. She wasn't. I was with her. I was with her 24 hours. I took. I had to take off work 
um, to be with her and take care of her. I wasn't going to let her be by herself at all. Elma, let me ask you a question. How was your mental attitude throughout all this? How did you How did you get through it? I'm still working on that. I don't want to be thinking about the what if, but with glioblastoma, of course, people say it's going to come back. It's going to come back no matter what you do. So, and then I'm like looking at these 16 year old survivors, 16, 20 years survivors, and I'm like, why can't my daughter be that one, that one person that does live that long? You know, it with cannabis oil, I believe it's possible. It's God's medicine. I believe it's God, <laughs> and she's in God's hands. So I'm like. I give it. I try to give it to God. I, I have my faith, and I'm praying and believing. That's one of my words is belief. So I believe in cannabis oil, and I believe in God, and I believe that she is in His hands. So that's what keeps me going. And her, her attitude, like again, is, her attitude is so positive. And she's not on any medicines, Ian and Corey. I'm not sure whether I even mentioned that. She's the only medicine she is on is Desmopressin, which is for her diabetes and cephalus which she developed after her surgery because she, it was a loss of a hormone. People are amazed that she's not on any medicines. She's not on any steroids. She's not on any pain medicines, nothing. All awesome. she's on is death pressing only because, only because of the death, um, diabetes and cephalus. And she never had diabetes and cephalus prior to the surgery. And, of course, all she, uh, I always say it, um, cannabis oil is her main medicine because that's what... That's what's keeping her alive. That's what's keeping you going as well, in terms of your mental exactly. health. And yes. your daughter today, is uh, she thriving? Yes. I mean, she is back to her normal self, if I could say that. Before her uh, diagnosis, she was very, um, I mean, she's very young, childlike as it is. And so she's back to where she's at. She's um, texting me. She never used to, I mean, during this whole past year, she wasn't texting me like she used to. She's, um, she's back into reading. She loved reading. She just doing a lot of art projects. She's always liked art, but I wanted to learn something new. So I got her into, um, plastic canvas, which is like a crochet kind of sort of thing. I don't know if you know what that means, but it's a learning of like a, a knitting, a knitting, um, type a project. So she has all the little um, crafts that she has done. And so she's so proud of that. <laughs> and so um, she she's she's amazing. She when she's like I said, she's back in junior high junior college. Last year she wanted to go back and we wanted her to take another year off because she took a year off of course of college and she's like, No, I want to go back. So let's let's touch you on the online classes. No, I want to go and physically be there. I want to be, I want to see people. I want to see the teacher. And then my son's like, Mom, I'll be there. I'll watch her. She's watched me all my life. It's time for me to watch her, which melted my heart, of course. And um, he's like, I'll take care of her, Mom, I promise. She has short term memory problems and a, a left field visual cut. So she doesn't drive. He doesn't drive either. So, um, it was very, very, very hard for me to let them go back to school or go, let them to go to school on their own. But uh, now, I mean, I basically have two special needs kids, young adults, I should say. And um, it's been tough. It really has. I tried going back to my work full time, but I couldn't. I kept thinking about her MRIs. Every three months she has MRIs. I get really bad anxiety, <laughs> so scared of what might happen or they're going to see it come back or they could see something of it. All her MRIs from the beginning have been good, no progression. Some even some of the radiologists have even said no evidence of disease. I'm like ecstatic about that. And the doctors even I'm surprised like, wow, you know, we're gonna, we need to start thinking about making the MRIs Every six months, you know, maybe one day we'll do it every year. And I'm like, let's just stay with it every three months. <laughs> I don't, I want to make sure Emma, that did, if, if God did, it comes back, we'll catch it right away. Yeah, do the, doc, yes, do the doctors know that she is using cannabis oil? To tell you the truth, I think they think something's happening, but they don't, they don't. I, I, they don't I, ask. I, yeah, right, they don't ask. 
and I don't tell him. And you don't tell. <laughs> but yeah. he don't, all he says is keep doing what you're doing. So yeah. it's like it's like an under. He knows. I think he knows. Yeah, I think he does too. I had that's that's that, in the beginning. Yeah, that's usually code for I I know what you're doing and I can't say anything about it, but just keep doing what you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And he goes enjoy your enjoy your time. And we'll see you back in three months. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's been incredible. It's yeah, been interesting been, ride. Elma, has this brought you closer together with your kids? Definitely. Um, I just amazed by everything she is accomplishing. I'm so proud of her. I I'm her and my son. I mean, they they both they balance each other out. You know, she's still going to speech therapy um, to help her with her memory issues, but um, she amazes me. She really, really amazes me, and I'm just so proud of her. And they're a great team. They are a great team together. Yeah. Elma, in conclusion, is there anything you'd want to say about uh, your daughter or about anything regarding cannabis? I just feel cannabis oil. What do you have to lose, you know? It may work for you, it may not, but at least you trying it, you could you could see you can, it does work. It does. It even with it may not help cure it, like they say. But hey, she's here one more day. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Elma, it was a pleasure a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, all the best to your your daughter, and uh, she'll live a long and healthy life. Thank you so very much, Ian and Corey. Yeah, thank you, Alma, very, very much. If you've got a story about the medical use of cannabis and what it has done for you, the wonders of cannabis, then send us an email at info at CannabisHealthRadio.com. Thanks for listening, everyone. You've been listening to the Cannabis Health Radio podcast. Visit our website, CannabisHealthRadio.com, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. 